The stereo-defined synthesis of alkenes is a textbook problem for which several solutions have been developed. However, in practice many of the classical methods, like Wittig or Julio olefinations, yield less than optimal results in terms of their EZ selectivity, especially when higher substitution patterns with substituents of similar size and electronic properties are targeted. In our paper titled Iterative Synthesis of Alkenes by Insertion of Lithiated Epoxides into Boronic Esters, we describe a method for the connective olefination of epoxides with boronic esters for making di, tri and even tetra substituted alkenes. But let's go back to the textbook for a moment. We know that we can turn monosubstituted alkenes into epoxides. In our work we describe a way of turning these epoxides into disubstituted alkenes after stereoselective lithiation and reaction with an appropriate boronic ester. So, by only looking at the starting materials one could see this is a two-step alternative to an oxidative heck coupling. However, this reaction works well with both sp2 and sp3 substituted boronates. And the nice thing is that the overall process can be applied iteratively by converting the disubstituted alkene into a trans epoxide again. Unfortunately, now there are two potential positions for epoxide lithiation. One way to steer this is to have one of the substituents as a benzene ring. Now lithiation in the benzylic position is more facile and another substituent can be introduced. But how does this reaction work mechanistically? Let's have a look at two reactions from the literature. In 1987, Pelter and co-workers described the boron version of the famous Wittig reaction, in which he added a boron-stabilized carbanion to an aldehyde. The resulting beta alkoxide was reacted with trifluoroacetic anhydride and subsequent zin elimination furnished an olefin. However, the stereochemical control of this whole process is limited by the falcon and selectivity of the aldehyde addition. In 2009, Agarwein and co-workers described the insertion of lithiated epoxides into boronic esters in order to make 1,2-diodes. Lithiation of the epoxide delivers a carbonoid, which then reacts to an 8-complex, which undergoes a stereospecific 1,2-rearrangement, delivering an intermediate, which is very similar to Pelter's beta alkoxide. The advantage of Agarwald's method, however, is the excellent stereoselectivity with which monosubstituted epoxides are lithiated. And since all subsequent steps are stereospecific, this stereoselectivity translates into very good DEs. So at first we set out to combine these two methods by trying to scavenge the beta alkoxide with different acid chlorides. In our hands, however, this led to quite unsatisfying mixtures of E and Z alkenes. This is probably due to the fact that the resulting intermediates can undergo both ZYN and anti-elimination under these conditions. Fortunately, just heating the resulting intermediates delivered the desired Zyn elimination products exclusively. This result could be rationalized by elimination of a 4-membered borooxetane or a 6-membered 8 complex which could be formed with excess boronate. The substrate scope of this method is pretty much in line with what one would expect based on this mechanism. As already indicated, both alkyl and aryl groups are tolerated and so are ethers and amides. Obviously, protons which are more acidic than the epoxide and electrophiles which can compete with the boronate are not tolerated. If you want to learn more about this olefination and its iterative application, take a look at our article in Organic Letters, which is linked in the description below. If you are interested in the iterative synthesis of heteratom-rich molecules, check out our video abstract of the corresponding review.